This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, however, I said I wanted to go through three separate bits of forecasting, because they're all the same overall topic. That was index numbers, and there's more there than definitely be asked. Uh, the next one is time series. Time series? <laughs> Try and look as if you've heard the word. Oh, good, she's heard the word. Okay, um, again, forgive me, when we, we just can't repeat everything from before. Before we went through a great long example, they cannot ask you to do a full example in the exam. They cannot for two marks. It's only little extracts to check you know the idea of it. And these three things I've asked here, I think between them is everything there's really any chance of being asked. All right? The trend, oh, sorry, I'll in just give me, let me remind you of one bit of introduction, otherwise, if you don't remember anything, it makes no sense at all. Uh, the main relevance of what we're doing is when you're forecasting sales. And the problem that can be, if it's a seasonal business, where sales are always higher some parts of the year, and always lower other parts... Hello? The problem you're going to get is if you drew a graph, which you'd never be have to do within the exam, but if I did a graph of sales each year over time, or sales every quarter over time, then it may be the case that sales are going up, but if we're very seasonal, you know, you're higher in summer, then its sales are lower in winter, then higher the next summer, lower in... you remember? You get that sort of pattern. You know certain times of the year it'll always be higher. You know certain times of the year it'll always be lower. And the whole idea is to try and forecast what the sales will be oh, in summer of next year or in the first quarter of next year or that sort of thing. Okay? And the terminology that goes with it the basic pattern, if there wasn't seasonality, is called the trend. So certainly you can be tested on the words, but the trend is, as I say, this basic pattern that'd be if it wasn't up in winter down in summer. And because it's likely to be a lot smoother, the dotted line might be easier to forecast, but even if you could forecast, we do know that sometimes of the year it's always higher, sometimes of the year it's always lower. You know what I mean? Well, the higher or lower bit we call the seasonal variation. So certainly the terminology matters, whether he checks it in just a word question, or whether the words are mentioned in a, in a numbers one. Well, as I said, he can't expect you to go through the whole problem, but I think these three should give us just about all we need. The trend forecast for sales in quarter two of next year is 18,000 units. So remember what that is. It says, if there wasn't for this seasonality, you'd be expecting to sell 18,000. You agree? It says, what is the actual forecast if the seasonal variation for quarter two is... Well, two other bits of words, and they could ask either... A, <coughs> it says quarter two, we've calculated the seasonal variation is plus 1,200. It says the additive model, and all we mean by additive, all it means 
is if the, the trend is in units, then this quarter is always 1,200 units higher. If the trend was in dollars, then this quarter is always $1,200 higher, and so on. You're understanding me? And again, depending whether it was summer, winter, or whatever, it could be plus 1,200, it could have been minus 1,200. Well, to do your forecast, your actual forecast, you take the trend, uh, it told us it was 18,000. And you simply add or subtract the relevant seasonal variation. Here it says it was plus 1,200. And therefore, I can't see any problem at all, you'd be forecasting 19,200. I'm not going to write and I shouldn't need... If instead I'd told you that quarter two was always lower than average and the variation was minus a thousand, you'd take the trend, you'd just subtract a thousand because that quarter's always lower. Is that clear? The only problem there, again, I did say before, is that if the sales, if the trend rather was growing a lot, then I think realistically you'd expect the variation to grow a lot. You know what I mean, Liga? Not to always be simply 1,200. And so the other way you could be told seasonal variations is part B, the multiplicative. So ignore part A, these are two separate questions. But if they give you the um, multiplicative one, to get your actual forecast, again, you take the trend, and the trend forecast was 18,000. But instead of adding or subtracting, as you do with the additive, effectively multiply. Part B says the seasonal variation is 85%. It simply means that this is a season where you always expect to be lower. Your actual forecast will be whatever percent of the trend. So 85% of the trend you'd actually forecast. Is it 15,300? And appreciate, some quarters are lower than trend, it's less than 100% as it is here. Other quarters, though, will be more than the trend, in which case the variation might be 105% or something, would you agree? So, I hope easy enough. I shouldn't have said that because it, it embarrasses. Are you all clear? All right, well, that's one way they can test it, just checking you understand how to use the two ways of seasonal variation. Uh, the second one is a way that uh, quite likely, actually, will give you the trend. You see, in question A, I told you the trend forecast was 18,000. All you did was a seasonal. What they might do is question two, and have you forecast the trend yourself? And so make sure you can use a simple equation. If you do do it, it'll be very much like this. The sales trend is given by the following equation. Somehow we've worked out an equation for the trend as 12,000 plus 30t. And because this is reasonably likely, it probably only has one question, make sure you're understanding what they, say, uh, what they mean by t. It says that equation will give us the trend where t is the month number with January being month 1, February being month 2, and so on. Alright? And they say, what is the sales forecast for July of this year? 
Well, we need T, the month number. If we know T, we can work out sales. You would agree? What would T be, please, for this question? Uh, seven. It would be month number seven. Use your fingers if you need. And so your forecast would be 12,000 plus 30 times seven. Am I right? 12,210? Thirty times seven is two hundred twelve two one oh. Appreciate that would be the trend forecast. If I had have told you there's a seasonal variation. Is that right? Some of you are pulling very funny faces. It is right. Are we happy? Yeah. Uh, now, that would be a trend forecast. If I had have added a bit more and said you have a seasonal variation of plus 1200 or minus 1200 or whatever, you know, you'd have done what we did in part A as well. Clear? Uh, one other thing. Tell me, suppose I'd asked you the same question, but I said, what's the forecast for February of next year? Can you write it down? February next year, what would be your trend forecast, please? 12, Sorry? No. What would it be if it was February next year? I think she's right. And see why, Liga. Surely, looking at it, it, it's going up each year. You know, if you did it for August, it'd be 30 times 8. It was going up each month, sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, if you did it for September, it'd be 30 times 9, and so on. Well, surely, if January this year is month 1, December this year is the 12th one, January next year is month number 13, February next year would be month number 14. Do you agree? And so your trend forecast, 12,000 plus 30 times 14. 30 times 14 is 420. I think 12, 420? So be careful, but I think you've all understood me. And then apart from obviously counting properly, I think you all agree the arithmetic's easy. All right, finally, number three. Now here, be careful about this. It's easy... But it's a way you could use what we've done in a slightly different way. And if you're going to do it, it'll probably be like number three, because this is very practical. The actual number of unemployed people in October is 240,000. Alright? Now please, before we do the numbers, listen carefully, see the logic of it. Because this happens, well, this happens here, it happens in most countries. But of course, the government keeps publishing the number of unemployed people. Nobody's listening to me. The government keeps publishing the number of unemployed people uh, because obviously people are interested. Is it going up or is it going down? Yeah? The trouble is, it can be misleading that maybe in the summer unemployment's always lower because there are people picking berries on the farm, you know? And in winter perhaps it's always higher because they're not picking berries on the farms, alright? And so it's a bit dangerous just to say, oh look, unemployment's gone up a lot in October. When you know it's going to go up a lot in October, it does every year. And so what would be rather nice is to try and remove this seasonal variation. We know here, it says the seasonal variation for October months is 105%. <coughs> it's saying, what we mean by seasonally adjusted, is saying if it wasn't for the fact that October is always higher, you know, if we remove that little bit of it, what the, would the number of unemployed be in October? Am I making sense? And so it's a work backwards. Surely, without seasonality, is what we need. We want.
I'll call it X. That's what I want to find out. How many would be unemployed if it wasn't for the fact that it's always more in October? All right? Well, we know it's always more in October. So since the seasonality is 105%, surely the actual you'd expect would be 105% of it. Everybody? And we're going to work backwards. Uh, we know what the actual number is, it's 240. What would it be if it hadn't been this 5% higher? X, 240,000 divided by 105%, or 1.05, same difference, is... Check me, 228571? So again, the numbers themselves are easy, you, you, you can't disagree, but does it make sense? And I say the reason she might throw that in is because governments do it. You know, every month they do this adjustment and then they can say, oh, it is fair to say, oh, October's more than September, you know. Smile. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So watch that. If you ever see seasonally adjusted those words, then it's this work back bit. Okay?